Look at that outfit. Amazing. You look gorgeous. You. You're like an angel. Oh, thank you. You never said anything that nice to me. Well, you are an, thank you. it's fine. You're a, an angel, too. Thank you. That's all, that's all I wanted. That's all I wanted. Lovely to meet you. Congratulations. Thank you so much. Now, you're no stranger to the Junos. Oh, here, I'm going to give you this microphone oh, yeah, first. Okay. There you go. Yeah, this will be my, my second one, but my first one in the children's category. Yes, because you're a jazz singer. Yes, I'm a jazz singer. So what kind of um, motivated you to make the transition to a children's record? I was just getting parents who were emailing me and saying, uh, you know, I use this song or that song, you know, to put my kid to bed. And, mm -hmm. and then I just, I, in one month, there was a particular month that I was just getting a lot of similar emails, and it sort of tweaked the idea. Oh, you know, maybe I should, could I make an album with all mm -hmm. kids stuff just for kids? And once the idea was there, I was pretty much committed to seeing it through so well and obviously an amazing job yeah so <laughs> so great it's interesting though because do you think that people assume it's easier to make children's music than it actually is like my sister works in children's publishing mm -hmm. and the sort of the joke is that everyone thinks they have a children's book in them when in fact it's very difficult to craft entertainment meaningful substantial entertainment mm -hmm. for that demographic that also appeals i call them a demographic i'm awful but <laughs> Is that, um, is that is it the same in children's to music? To be really honest, I didn't, honestly, I didn't overthink it too much. Mm -hmm. I just thought if they're already listening mm -hmm. to, uh, you know, sort of what was intended to be adult level jazz, mm -hmm. I just thought all I need to do are find the right songs and then we're just going to do it the same way we've done the other albums. And I, I use some of the finest, you know, jazz musicians and classical musicians that exist in Canada today mm -hmm. uh, that I've used on my other albums. And we just sat down with the songs and we said, we're just going to, we're not going to change anything. Mm -hmm. If the kids are already listening to them, mm -hmm. uh, we're just going to do what we do. And uh, we had no idea, honestly, what age group we were targeting. It was just a matter of if there's kids already listening and liking, mm -hmm. then mm -hmm. hopefully they'll listen and like this too. So I, it wasn't like uh, I didn't sit down and try to, f to sort of figure out who's going to listen to this. I just thought I'm going to make it. <laughs> yeah. Do you remember the music you listened to when you were a child? Um, I listened to Rafi. It was it was a really big honor to be uh, nominated alongside of him mm -hmm. because it's just a generation or so later mm -hmm. um, to be sharing the category. And um, he did a lot of great songs for kids. And I remember, you know, singing Baby Beluga and that sort of stuff in the <laughs> living room. Teeth. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> Right. Yeah. So, um, I yeah. Time. So, I mean, I, I, and and I also listen to a lot of stuff from like sort of musicals and mm -hmm. and some of the stuff we covered was from Disney and Sesame Street. Oh, right. So we did like Rainbow Connection and some of those kinds of classic tunes. So, yeah. Some of them were new to me though. You know, there were songs from that from the era in which I grew up, but I didn't know them. So that was an interesting discovery too. So. What was your favorite discovery? Oh, sorry. sorry. We're so excited to talk We're to just you. Like, Tell us more. Um, well, there was a couple of really cool Sesame Street songs that mm -hmm. I had never heard. Mm -hmm. One of them was one that Ernie sings to Bert when Bert says he's having trouble to get to sleep. And it's about imagination, which became... The, I, at first, I was going to do a lullaby album, but I do have a rather relaxing voice, and I thought if I do a whole album of lullabies, they'll never hear more than three tracks. So I did sort of imagination as a theme, the beginning of it being when you're awake, mm -hmm. imagination, and then the latter part being the sort of the dream sequence mm. when you go into sleep and that was one of the last songs we added on the album but I just found it at the last minute and I was like this is a great song we did a bunch of songs by Joe Raposo who used to compose for Sesame Street mm. and he actually was a fascinating composer because he felt that children's music should incorporate a diverse range of influences mm -hmm. so he was bringing an African uh, Brazilian themed music into Sesame Street mm -hmm. and a lot of it's actually pretty sophisticated and not always as happy as I think what some people might think of when we think of children's music today. Some of it's kind of sad almost and reflective and we do like Gonzo's song and for the Muppets too and like some of them are they're like they're kind of quiet and 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 kind of reflective so it seemed to me that it was a bit maybe lacking mm -hmm. in like the current market that there were just some of these more introverted songs maybe. I think there's a slightly introverted quality to the album. So interesting. Mm -hmm. Introverts need music too. That's right. <laughs> Thank you so much for your time and Thank coming back here and talking to us. And yes, congratulations. Thank yes, you congratulations. for having me. Oh, and I'm supposed to tell you all that uh, you can stream live on junotv.ca. Right? Oh, good plug. Yeah, yeah. that was excellent. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Thank we, you so we much. We have been failing at our plug. I, I mean, I'm <laughs> <laughs> We should okay. hire you next year. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> your outfit you. is amazing too. Thank